Yo, what's going on with y'all? I got a suggestion to review the Silmarillion, which as I understand is basically the backstory Tolkien created for his four books of the Lord of the Rings trilogy that got released. The reason I'm reviewing this is because the level to which Tolkien thought stuff out to is actually ridiculous. I mean, there isn't a writer out there that isn't jealous of the fact that he actually created a full-on language that you can learn to read and write for his elves. If they claim they are not, they are lying. But anyway, this should actually be good fun, because Tolkien really does like to think a lot of stuff out, so let's go ahead and delve on into this. So Tolkien spends a long time talking about Elevata, who was the original creator, and his race of holy ones who he created, and how one of them ended up betraying him, and it's pretty directly a parallel of the beginning of the world according to Christian creation. And I actually think it's kind of interesting, because something that's not always well known is that Tolkien actually was a devout Christian, which, I mean, personally, I enjoy it as a Christian, and I think it's kind of cool to say, hey, look, we don't always have to like fit into boxes because typically people would take a look at a lot of the stuff that is in Tolkien's world such as evil kings, Sauron's magic, all that kind of stuff and say, oh well obviously it's demonic. It's like, no actually that stuff is used for demonic purposes but it can be used in whatever manner the author chooses to use it. So I think it's kind of cool that there's that little, you know, parallel and it's, I don't know, it makes me happy. I can understand how it would irritate somebody that's not religious though. So one of the things that's kind of interesting about this being really little more than a biblical retelling with changed names, is the fact that uh, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were actually good friends, C.S. Lewis having written the Narnia series. And uh, Tolkien actually criticized Lewis's work, stating that he felt his work wasn't subtle enough, whereas Tolkien is known for letting uh, Christian themes be the underlying part of his message, uh, C.S. Lewis was a bit over the head with it. And I see both points, I can absolutely see both authors, writing styles, and uh, I find myself to be a little bit more moderate in the middle. Uh, granted, I also don't focus quite on fantasy as much as they did. But the part of this that I think is interesting is that Tolkien criticizes Lewis for not being subtle enough when the Silmarillion is basically the Bible with changed names, like, uh, at least the beginning of it. Obviously, once it goes down a further path, it gets to the introduction of all the races and everything, it gets a little more spread. But uh, honestly, through like the first chunk of it, it basically just is the telling of how Lucifer fell from heaven. That, that's really all it is. Again, the names are changed, and I'm not going to remember all of them, because they're all ridiculously complicated names that I'm listening to it and not reading it, so I would get them wrong anyway. But, uh, I just think it's interesting that, that there is that distinction there, especially because Tolkien's Silmarillion is not subtle at all. Like, anyone that's read the Bible ever will pretty much be able to pick this out. In fact, even if you haven't, you could probably pick this out. So this book is kind of actually weird to review, because it doesn't have so much of a particular character or storyline as much as summarizations of the events of the world. Now that being said, it's really deeply thought out and it's really cool to see, and especially whenever they do reference uh, creatures or characters that you come to know from the typical Lord of the Rings books, uh, such as the Flying Eagles or Sauron uh, or, or creatures of valor, things like that. You know, and you're like, oh, hey, I do know what that is, because uh, you have a context to place it into. But it kind of has the same problem that a lot of sci-fi books do, in that beyond that, it's the name of a lot of places and a lot of characters who you never really get to know. Um, and yeah, sure, they do have their own rules to play, and it's really cool to see from like a backstory perspective, but it's also kind of weird to make that a book, if you get what I mean. I don't know, it's, it's personally I'm enjoying it, and I, I think it's totally cool to read, but it's something that if you weren't like a mega fan of Lord of the Rings, I can totally see why you wouldn't enjoy it. So overall, I do have to say that I find this pretty impressive. Uh, even if it does kind of have the problem that it has with Red Dead Redemption, it more the fact that I find the effort it would take impressive. And maybe I find it more impressive because I am a dungeon master and I know the struggle that go in with trying to create a full and comprehensive world that people won't poke tons of holes in. But anyway, um, I think just ultimately it's one of those things, it's really cool and it's really interesting, but it, I also acknowledge that it's a very niche market that the Silmarillion fi uh, fills. Uh, personally, I find myself in that niche market, so I think it's cool. Um, but anyway, it's not something that's like actually super conducive to the bingo card, so we're not going to fill that out. But uh, personally, I would have to give this an 8 out of 10. I think it's great, and if it's one of those things I could judge within the context of Lord of the Rings, I think it's, you know, a 9.5 out of 10. It's, it's brilliant, and I think it's fantastic to have all this lore and thought-out backstory. It's actually thought out really, really well. But the huge pulse-rating asterisk that comes with that is that it's only really anything in that context of the world and so on its own merits it doesn't stand up which is kind of a glaring problem which is the reason that I, I rate it as low as I do but it is deeply thought out and it actually is woven very beautifully and 
it really does seem like Tolkien actually took this world very, very seriously, which is a pleasure to hear as an author. Um, so overall, I enjoyed it. I, uh, I hope you guys, you know, uh, who have read it, uh, find it enjoyable, and I think it's a very cool thing to see. Gives me hope for my own, you know, mythological planning, if you want to call it that. But anyway, uh, that's all for this week, so... If you have something else you would like to me to read, watch, review, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. Until then, drink plenty of water, tell your parents to love them, and stroke your mustache at night. Wow.